I'm speaking with No Violet Bulawayo, author of the novel We Need New Names, and she's won she's been shortlisted for so many awards recently that I had to write them down for the Guardian First Book Award and the Man Booker Prize, which is very exciting. And here's some great praise from Juno Diaz, who selected you for the five under 35 awards. I knew this writer was going to blow up. Her honesty, her voice, her command of her craft, all were apparent from the first page. And I just wanted to let you know that I read your book, which I think I already told you, and tweeted it and Facebooked it in one sitting. It was so amazing. I was up until like four o'clock in the morning. Um, and I also was reading your blog and it was very inspiring and I, I was really interested in this in this little anecdote you told about your father and giving him your book. Um, my father is Italian, but he doesn't read English. Oh. So I know that he probably won't ever read my books. Uh -huh. And I'm wondering how how you feel about that. If it's a, is it a relief, or is there a little bit of loss in there, or do you think you know what what has the reception been from? friends and family at home in Zimbabwe? Um, those of my friends and family who have read the book have been, you know, very, very supportive and pleased with, with the product. With my father, he, he reads English, he has read the book, but the thing is he hasn't come out and told me face to face what he thinks. Right. And uh, he, he's that kind of man. I mean, when I was in high school, he, he never he never dished out compliments, but I am hearing from rumors that he's proud of the book and proud of what I'm doing. So Great. yeah, I'm sure yeah. he is. Yeah, I'm sure he is. Um, and then here's a question that I've been asking everyone because um, it's something that I'm really interested in: um, is when did you feel that you were able to give yourself permission to think of yourself as a writer? Know, like with a capital W, was it when you were younger, recently? It's with the publication of the book. Um, before that, I just felt like I was, you know, I was just trying. And of course, writing is one of those weird things where anybody can do it, really. Anybody can call themselves a writer. And for me, thinking of the writers that I kind of looked up to, I didn't see myself at that level. But of course, my first novel was, was published and I had no choice but to, to sort of accept the, the tech. Right. Yeah. And not only was it published, but it's adored by many readers and many, it's, many, it's, you it's know. It's a lucky book. It's yeah, it's, it's a lucky book. <laughs> See, it's hard, right? It's hard to give yourself permission to Absolutely. say, I'm awesome. Absolutely. But I think readers sort of help you get there because yeah. the kind of feedback that you get Makes, right. makes you start thinking, well, maybe maybe I'm a writer after all, so, yeah. And um, so what's your ideal reading experience when you're looking for a book that you can escape into? What is it that you're looking for? I am looking for a book that doesn't allow me to put it down. I like to drink my books. I like to inhale them in one sitting, if possible. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And what was the last book that, that did that for you? The last book that did that for me was uh, The Hairdresser of Harare by Tendai Uchu. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I've been talking about with the, with the writers how serious author photos are sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so I came up with this question of what makes you laugh? <laughs> what makes me laugh? Funny people, <laughs> you know. I, I love to laugh. Uh, but I don't meet enough funny people in my everyday, in my day-to-day -day life. Yeah. All right, great. And then will you sign my book? Absolutely, okay. I'd love to. All right. Oh, I forgot my pen again. <laughs>